On today's podcast, we talk about all things summer, bug bites, sunscreen, if you're traveling a lot in the summer or not, how you can protect yourself and your kids from parasites, bacteria, and all the things that we don't want to be dealing with so that we can actually enjoy summer. Live your life within the moment, moment, and don't go wait until the morning, morning, you never know when it is over. I am hoping that because we are doing a podcast on summer travel tips that it stops snowing here. It snowed this morning. It's April 25th when we're recording this right now. It's wild. And it just continues to confirm what I want to do in terms of moving very soon. The other day, a guy came up to me at the gym and he's like, so you're moving to Florida, huh? I was like, that's the goal. (laughs) My dream house is down there. It's only one million. It's just, I feel it's like just that's one. Doable. Like it's only one. Yeah. Okay. So like, you know, manifestation in my visualization through phase one, I've been, you know, mm-hmm. working on this very diligently, very proud of myself. Going to be wrapping up here in a week that all good things come to fruition. Mm-hmm. And obviously you have to work hard and you're not just going to manifest these things into no. existence. But I was telling my husband, I'm like, I'm imagining our dream house and this and this. And he's like, well, I don't want it to be that color. <laughs> Like, okay, well, we can, you know, discuss this, but, um, yeah, that house that I sent you, it's, it's just 1 million. I know just it's one. doable. Speaking of manifesting. So last night, Carson is in his policeman phase. He loves police officers Still. and we have two police officers that live like a block over and he sees their police cars outside. So last night we're like in the kitchen, I'm making, it's like six 15, I'm making them dinner and Carson goes, mom, can I go to say hi to officer snow? And I'm like, who is Officer Snow? And he's like, well, Allie, who's this little girl across the street, told me that that police car, it's Officer Snow's police car. And I'm like, Carson, we can't just go to people's houses and ring their doorbell and ask to see their police car. Like, the, it's not polite. You can't, we don't know them. Like, and he's like, but mom. And then he starts crying and he has like this full blown meltdown. And so Nick was like, Carson, I will, after, if you eat your dinner, after dinner, I, we can take a bike ride. And if he's over there, we can, you know, if he's outside, we can say hi. So Nick, they come back and Nick's like, you won't believe what just happened. <laughs> so they went and he wasn't outside. And so they stopped to like, just look at the police car. And I guess he saw. And so he came outside and let Carson get in the police car Aww. and like, you know, turn on the lights and all this stuff. So cool. And I told Nick, I was like, he manifested that shit. <laughs> he said, I'm going to go do this. And he went and did it. And it happened for him. That's awesome. And so we were telling him, he was like, we were like, Carson, you can't do this every night though. Like we can't, he was eating dinner with his wife. You can't just like go to people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's awesome. And it's nice to have, we have a state trooper that lives in the neighborhood. Yeah. I, saw, I see his car all the time. Yeah. I'm like, when do you work? <laughs> We actually saw him outside yesterday and we kind of have like a running neighborhood joke. This guy's like got to be in his 20s. I'm like, okay. Uh, anyways, and then we have a retired uh, state trooper that lives up the street and we're, um, we go to their house sometimes for like just different things in the neighborhood and stuff and super, super nice guy. But it's just nice to know that you have people that mm-hmm. yeah. serve and protect in your yeah. area. Yeah. Carson loves them. And then I, Carson didn't want to go to bed last night because he takes too long of a nap at daycare. And I'm trying to fall asleep and Nick went to go lay with him. And I hear Carson go, Dada, I'm going to go up, get up and go pee and poop. And then when I get back, let's take our shirts off and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> like what is going through your head? <laughs> Cause I think he sees that Nick like sleeps without a shirt. And this morning I went to wake him up and he goes, see mom, I'm not wearing a shirt. Me and Dada took our shirts off last night to go to sleep. And I was like, great, great, great bud. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you right now. <laughs> I know. Marcus is in. He's just in like multiple phases right now. My favorite part is, you know, as you've talked about that Carson can't say certain words. Mm-hmm. He, he can't say snack. It's knack. And then I want a knack. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, he's very like daddy lion and baby lion. And I'm like, well, what about me? He's like, okay, me, him, not you. Okay, no, but then you could be mama lion. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, well, what does mama lion say? So we like to make these lion noise. And he's like, no, mom, it's not like that. It's like this. <laughs> Rawr. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, bud. Whatever you say. Dear They're world. The best. They so the best. hopefully you have some trips planned for the summer and we're gonna give you some tips today. Mm-hmm. By the way, beyond our banter, Liz and I 
our functional health practitioners. Uh, we love to do podcasts like this that are just kind of like little tips and tricks, more lighthearted, because a lot of times our podcasts are not maybe just super fluffy and lighthearted. They are very more educational around gut and hormones and immune function and inflammation and all of the things that affect how we feel and how we look. Sometimes they are very mindset related, um, the tough love that you need to hear that you might not want to always hear. And then we have experts on, which we are so excited. We have so many good podcast interviews coming up and scheduled and more people that we're reaching out to all the time to get you guys the best up-to-date information for your health, for your kids' health, and just to be more informed. So if you are new here, that is what we do on The Food Code. We love to bring you the information in a fun, digestible manner, and we like to talk. Yeah. And behind us, we have a team of people, so we always need to give them a shout out because it is no longer just Becca and I. No. Um, We have a team of five now. So we have two assistants, which are phenomenal. Ashley and Casey, we got to give them a shout out because they help us do all the things and all the little details that we just don't, unfortunately, have time for anymore. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, don't have time for anymore, I should say. Uh, And then we have Danny. Caitlin and Lauren as uh, our practitioners. And then of course, my husband who helps us with all of our marketing and media, podcast, website, all the downloads that you might find from us and our freebies and those, the content on our website, we can give a big shout out to him because none of this would be possible without our team. So we just show up, we share our knowledge, we give you education, but you got to remember that it takes a team to make a dream work. So I wanted to give them a shout out today. Absolutely. All right, so we're t- covering a few things today inside of this. So we want to talk about summer tips. Uh, we're going to include some travel tips in here for you, but also just some things that you can utilize and think about with your routines this summer. So, you know, obviously your kids are out of school. Maybe you're eating dinner later. Your t- routine just kind of shifts. It's lighter out later. You're at the park later. Mm-hmm. I know for us, we've been eating dinner later because we've been at the park or after school, like sporting events or karate, whatever. And we just want to give you guys some things to just be mindful of and kind of pay attention to with your biofeedback throughout this time. So I think first and foremost is sleep. Um, you know, obviously if we're eating dinner later, that pushes maybe bedtime back a little bit later. So be mindful of that because sleep is really important. We want to get seven to eight hours of good restful sleep. So maybe shift your routine a little bit or just say, Hey, you know what? We spent extra time outside. Now we're doing all these house chores. Maybe we don't get as much Netflix and chill time tonight. And it's hard because that's your time with your husband, right? Or your downtime. It's the only time you get to yourself. But I've talked to a few clients already who are getting less sleep. They notice they're getting less sleep because they're still getting up for their 5 a.m. workouts. And maybe we need to look at that as well. More time in nature. You know, for me... I know Becca is doing this as well. We're very cautious with the amount of stressful workouts that we do. And this is a great time to take opportunity to de-stress in nature and go for nature walks. Mm -hmm. I've been doing lots of walks. And that's one thing that I love about summertime is that it gets light out earlier. It's warmer out. So getting up and getting sunlight earlier is much easier Mm -hmm. uh, than in the wintertime. So I don't have to use my happy light as much. I can just get up and get outside. And then it's always good for the kiddos to be out and utilizing the energy, being out in nature, eating the dirt, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I did the collaboration post with Deidre from Always Growing. We talked to, you know, a little bit about supporting kids' health. And a lot of this is like, we need to be outside Mm -hmm. and evolve and, you know, have our immune system exposed to various things. And we're going to talk about parasites and some things you can do to protect yourself in this podcast too. But let them play in the dirt. Take your shoes off. Grounding is really important Mm -hmm. uh, for people. So walk outside barefoot. I know if we're not doing like legit yard work, I've been kicking off my socks and shoes and just walking around the yard, you know, with Marcus or playing and whatnot, and just trying to get some of that connection with the earth. And it sounds woo woo and that's okay because it is a little bit woo woo, but it's effective. I mean, it, it, it research shows it lowers cortisol, it lowers lowers blood pressure. Like Mm -hmm. it, There is research, and I think that I actually saw a post this morning that was talking about, it mentioned the woo-woo comment, Mm -hmm. um, but how what has been like practice for ancient cultures for years, we now think of as like, oh, that's silly. 
you know, like, <laughs> oh, I, 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 breathing exercises, meditation, like being outside without shoes on. Yeah. That's all silly. Like, why would we do that? Why would I do that? I actually saw a post the other day and you'll love this. So it's talking about like the 1800s, and the 1900s, like, man, we just wish we had running water, man. We would wish we just had warm water. Right. And then you get into like the 1900s and like, awesome. We have hot showers and all this stuff. Fast forward to 2022. And it's like, go take a cold plunge. <laughs> take a cold shower it's so true uh which by the way i will say i know becca has been doing this too but uh in phase one part of phase one is a five minute cold shower i've definitely noticed a shift in my stress handling yes so i've talked a little bit on this we've talked on this podcast but a little bit on instagram and just some reels in terms of like stimulating your vagal mm-hmm. tone and your vagus nerve and you can do this a variety of ways but one of them is a little bit of cold therapy right mm-hmm. so you can put ice on the back of your neck you can splash cold water on your face ice on the back of the neck is actually really helpful for babies or you can just do like um what they would do like the freezer teether type thing and put that yep. on the back of the neck just like rub it there massage it or like a vibrating toothbrush for babies if you need to do that to help them but cold therapy stimulates your vagus nerve and it just gets you into more of a rest and digest state, more of a sympathetic state. So, you know, people are like, I don't think I could ever do that. Uh, I thought the same thing, but after doing it for several weeks, like I don't want to lose that. Even if it's that I take a warm shower and then I just turn it cold towards the end. Like right now, the five minute cold showers is like, I'm doing my dry brushing, shaving my legs. How can I, you know, what do I do in this whole five minutes? Wash my hair, like other things. I just normally don't take a five minute shower because I don't know what you do for five minutes in the shower if you're not washing hair and shaving your legs. But I don't know how you shave your legs in cold water. Uh, well, I definitely have some goosebumps, so it's not like the most pleasant experience, but the dry brushing has been helpful. Uh, you that dry brush in the shower with I the cold? Do. Oh, interesting. So on my dry brush, I have like plastic, like what are the, I don't want to call them nodules, but like little balls on the other side. Got it. So that I've been doing a little bit more. The dry, like the actual brushing part, I've done that, but it kind of hurts. It does. Yeah. Yep. So I've been doing the other side of that in the cold shower. So you just start from your ankles, you know, um, brush up all through, you know, your legs and then your abdomen. And like, I'll do like abdomen massage in there for digestion. And then from my wrist. Yep. Dry brushing arms. helps with lymphatic flow. If yeah. you do not know what dry brushing is, it is a kind of like a soft bristle, bristle brush that you brush upwards towards your heart, starting with the legs and the arms, and you're always brushing towards the heart. And it helps with blood flow, um, which is important for detoxification and drainage of the body because our bodies are constantly pushing things out. Um, so let's talk about some products that you can use though this summer mm-hmm. as you are getting your kids ready, as you are getting ready, because I just got a list from daycare of like 19 things that Taylor uh-huh. needs for summertime, like water shoes, but not Crocs, but they're closed toed one hat. That's a sun hat, sunscreen, three pairs of alternate clothes for summertime. I'm like, do I need to like buy her a new wardrobe to provide you with three pairs of clothes that are different? It's, yeah. it's a lot. So, um, She's 18 months old. Like, do I really need all of this stuff? So I just, I actually grabbed one of these labels of sunscreen. That is a great option because as we know, sunscreen is very, very possible to be very toxic. Um, We are putting it on our baby's skins, which can be then absorbed into their systems. So just something to consider. And then also something to consider letting your kids be outside without sunscreen sometimes and letting them be exposed to the sun. We need that exposure. We are going backwards in terms of what we should be doing with getting out in the sunlight, getting vitamin D without putting like 60 SPF on our children if they're going to be outside for 15 minutes. Obviously, if they're outside for three plus hours, yes, they need some sunscreen and protection, especially my pasty white boy. Um, But children are supposed to be exposed to the sun. That is that is a very important aspect of our development. Yeah. And we also wear sunglasses, right? And you synthesize vitamin D through your eyes mostly. So get even for yourself, take your shirt off, take your sunglasses off. Like Mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, there's a lot of controversy obviously because people think, you know, skin cancer and the question becomes, are we getting cancer from all of these sprays and lotions that we're lathering on our body in addition to all of the other things in our life, processed foods, chemicals, EMFs, various things. So obviously we're not saying go out and burn yourself 
Um, you know, if you're going to Mexico for a week and you're going to be on the beach, <laughs> I do advise protection there for sure. Cause I have, uh, gotten burnt there too many times, but yeah. So hats can be helpful to shade yourself. Um, obviously you can use fans and things like that, but, uh, from a toxicity perspective, there's a few brands and we're going to name them off. You're not going to remember these guys. I'm not going to remember these all the time. So what you can do is download the Yuka app, Y-U-K-A. It's a free app. You can scan things. And if your product that you have at home right now isn't the best, it's going to tell you why. And then it's going to give you some alternatives. You can also visit the EWG. So EWG has uh, several guides. They actually have a guide for sunscreen. They have a guide for bug repellent and bug spray. So those would be two additional resources in addition to this podcast if you want to go and compare some things. So we'll just give you high level. And then we are going to talk a little bit about um, some things that we really like just for the kids with like scrapes or cuts or burns or just the things they do day to day. Yesterday we were at the park and then my son is like in the phase where he wants to jump off of things. Not like Carson. I mean, Carson's not that crazy climber. Like no, Marcus Taylor is. is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're going to break. You're going to break your arm. You're going to break something here. Can we please stop? He's like, yeah, but I don't want to hit my head. I was like, right. So we probably shouldn't be jumping from five steps above. But anyways, so sunscreens, attitude, think sport, sun bum, think baby, earth mama. Those would be all really good ones. And they do make them for adults as well. Mm -hmm. I just got the think baby one for Taylor. Um, and then bug spray and repellent bites uh, or repellents for bites. Um, like we mentioned, you can use the Yuga app. And just a fun fact, if you are someone that gets like mosquito bites or bug bites and has really big welts or reactions to them, it is a usual sign of mineral deficiencies. Um, so just something to consider. If you are that person, maybe look to your gut. Maybe look to what you are not absorbing within the gut. Uh, that is some, one of the questions that probably seems random on our intake questionnaire. Mm -hmm. uh, people are always like, yeah, I, I always, you know, I saw that and I was curious about, I'm, I'm someone that I get a mosquito bite and my skin welts up. up. Yeah, definitely a sign of uh, mineral deficiencies. Yeah. So again, I think here you guys can just uh, go on and search, you know, what you want. There are a few that you can use. Um, they, the research on DEET is kind of mixed. So some of this information is from like 2013. So, you know, I would say that it depends upon first and foremost, where you're at and what you're being exposed to. So why we consider bug bites is we think about Lyme disease, which is becoming very, very prevalent. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's the thing that most people don't know. You can contract parasites from bug bites as well. So there are thousands of different types of parasites, 340 plus that inhibit the human body through a variety of uh, ways. So it can be in tap water. It can be a bug bite. It can be things that you bring into your home. So like shoes, from your shoes, yep. uh, things that are naked to the eye, because for example, on plants and like fruits, vegetables, things like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be an active parasite. It can be like the egg mm -hmm. that's in there, right? And same thing with like meats, unless you're cooking everything like well done. You think about deli meat, sushi, just for me, I like my steak, medium rare, you know, things like that. So um, stomach acid is really important to protect you first and foremost. But secondly would be some things we'll talk about a little bit later regarding, you know, just things that can help food wise uh, to offset parasite infections just kind of protect you. But that said, I do think that bug spray is appropriate uh, if you know that you are going to be really exposed in nature, like you're camping or something along those lines. Um, so you can use a couple of things. DEET at 10% or less for children. Picaridin, oil of lemon, eucalyptus, <laughs> not recommended for children under uh, three years old though. And then um, when it comes to DEET, the agency basically says that from 2016, DEET with a concentration of 20 to 30% for children's protection from Lyme disease and porn, you know, tick illness uh, is helpful. Health Canada recommends DEET with concentrations no greater than 5 to 10% for children. Again, this is a weaker concentration, so it might not offer strong defense against ticks bearing Lyme disease. So, you got to use your best judgment. It also depends upon how old your child is. Mm -hmm. um, there are natural things, of course, that you can use in terms of like essential oils and things like that. Um, I think I would just check out the EWG's guide to bug repellents and pick one that you feel 
confident about. They do have a chart on there that talks about various viruses. So West Nile, Zika, and then insect bites only, like what concentrations you would be looking at in each of the categories uh, and different types of bug repellents. Yeah. And obviously Lyme disease is much more prevalent on the East Coast. Um, so it it can happen, you know, other places, but just something to consider. It, it is it tends to be it tends to dominate the East Coast in terms of that area and uh, the, fo- you know, the forestry in that area and the coast area. So something to consider. Um, obviously, we don't want to be like fear mongers here, but it is something that our bodies used to be able to tolerate. Parasites have not become they're not a new thing. You know, the Lyme disease is not a new thing. It's unfortunate that we have become kind of more toxic as a culture. We'll talk about that on another podcast too soon coming out around glyphosate um, and how the exposure and the level of glyphosate within the body, the human body, has raised by about a thousand percent in the past, I think it's 20 to 30 years. Um, we, We are just under so much of a larger load now that we have to be more proactive in terms of what we are using with our bodies, how we are, you know, supporting our kids' bodies and all of the things that we should be able to manage and get rid of naturally, like parasites, like bacteria, like all of these things. But now that we're just, you know, under a different situation in our world, we have to be more conscious of it. So um, when it comes to scrapes and cuts for your kiddos, I know a lot of times it's like, what do I use? Nick and I were actually talking about this the other night. He was like, did your parents ever use, I think it's called like bata- Bacadin, but it's like a B word and it's kind of like a hydrogen peroxide, but worse mm. um, because we were watching a, video, a movie and they put something on like an open wound, alcohol on an open wound. Um, mm. But I just remember my parents used hydrogen peroxide and then it would bubble and <laughs> it would, I mean, it would obviously probably kill the bacteria, but it was also super painful. Um, so there is a company called Active Skin that is great for um, children and like repair of scrapes and cuts. So just look up Active Skin. They have lots of different options. They have an antimicrobial hand spray. They have a repair spray. They have a first aid spray. Um, and then First Honey is another one that's a Manuka honey ointment. Uh, Manuka is great for parasites. So It is, those are some good options for if your little kiddos are ones that run around and get the scrapes. Yeah. And I would just say, understand here with the Manuka honey, if you can look them up on Amazon or their website, it's called the brand is first honey. This is different than just your regular Manuka honey, right? It's (laughs) medical grade, uh, the honey that has a lower pH level and a high sugar content, which aids wound healing processes. So again, we just are looking for better alternatives. Um, That brand also makes band-aids that have manuka in the uh, little pad of the band-aid too, which is pretty cool. So yeah, you're going to spend a little bit more for these things, but hopefully you don't need to use them, you know, that much. Uh, And then when you guys are traveling, so we've talked a lot about water quality (laughs) and I just cannot reiterate enough. Do not drink tap water. Like just don't do it. Uh, my niece makes fun of me. So I'm going to tell this story about myself and embarrass myself a little bit. This was probably three or four years ago. We had an event, like some family event. Uh, no, here's what we did. We went to see the horse races at Arlington Heights. Mm -hmm. So we had some drinks and then we had my niece's communion party and we had some more drinks and, uh, I wanted some (laughs) water and I was like, I cannot eat, drink this tap water. If it's tap water, I don't want it. I was like, ew, don't you have any like bottled water? And it was like a not a like nice bar because it was like the last bar of the day that we were going to and the lady's like I'm sorry like we don't have and then I like wouldn't drink the water and I was like it's time to go home <laughs> it was time to go home for me anyways but <laughs> in my state I still wanted to want to drink the tap water um so anyways if you guys are traveling a couple of things I mean Beck and I have talked before about different filters that you can buy for you know water bottles or things like that to travel but if you are buying it from the store Essentia is a really good brand you can do Fiji of course um or you can just do distilled water and add electrolytes and add minerals to it. So that's one of the the cleanest things that you could do. Obviously in the summertime when we're sweating more, we're doing maybe outdoor workouts and you're losing a lot of electrolytes and minerals, your increase for these things elevate Mm -hmm. your increase. Your need for these things increase uh, both for hydration in terms of the amount of water that you're consuming and your need for electrolytes and minerals. So just remember that. I can't tell you how many people in the summertime that we've had like, oh, you know, things just don't feel that great or my energy is low or whatever. And it's like, well, you fell off the water train. 
Yep. My hands are swollen. My this, I noticed this with myself personally. If I'm mm-hmm. outside all afternoon with the kids, my fin- my rings start getting tight on my fingers because your body starts to store water because it is dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Your body will start to bloat you if you get dehydrated. And we're, again, another podcast coming up soon is going to talk about the water balance in the body and how it impacts how you look. Because everyone knows, like, that person that gets super stressed and then isn't drinking water all day and is drinking a bunch of coffee. And at first you feel super lean, but then you're bloated for the next two to three days because your body is basically trying to retain water to keep a sodium balance. And since sodium is low because you've been sweating it out, guess what? Your body's increasing water and it's going to dehydrate you. You're going to feel puffy. And it essentially is because there's more water extracellularly. So you feel it versus intramuscularly, which is when. A lot of times people feel lean when you're actually hydrated. You're holding more water, but it's inside your muscles, so you look leaner. So we'll explain that a little bit further on another podcast, but you need more water and electrolytes. You need more, like you want to feel lean, get water up, jack your water up and jack electrolytes up. You will flush water out. You will feel better. We see it all the time with clients. So in the summertime, when you're sweating more, you need more water and electrolytes. I know you're busy. I don't care. Drink your water. So it's also a foundational piece. That's the easiest thing to do. Get a win. Just get a win in. Drink your water. And if you don't like water, okay, then use something to flavor it. Like element tea that's going to give you the best of both worlds. Like we have links in the show notes to get you a free sample pack. Every purchase that you get from them, no sugar, no artificial garbage in there. Awesome stuff. Beck and I drink it every day, typically twice a day. Um, we just both got saunas, which we're really excited mm-hmm. about. So I'll be doing that 30 minutes before, fill up uh, my electrolyte stores and hydrate and then go sit in the sauna for 20, 30 minutes. So the same thing comes in place no matter what you're doing and how you're sweating. If you're going to the gym and you're working out or you're going sauna or you're outside and doing an outdoor workout or you're just out, you know, having a fun day at the park with your kids and it's really hot and you're sweating there, you need to focus on water. Like you wouldn't let, here's the thing I'm going to say. If you are a mom, you wouldn't let your child go all day without drinking water. Would you? I hope not. So why do you let yourself go all day without drinking? Like I just didn't, I forgot. No, you, you didn't plan. You didn't plan. You didn't bring it with you. You didn't think about it. You know, this is something like I always have my water bottle with me. And if you forget it, guess what? There's a Walgreens or a CVS on almost every corner. Yes, you or know? gas station. Gas station. Like get, you know, like we said, Fiji, Essentia, E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A. Even like Icelandic water is pretty good. So you can find any of those at a grocery store or at a gas station. Like accept that it is a you problem and then you can be the solution. If you don't accept that it's a you problem, you there will never be a solution. Yeah. And you will keep running into the same failures that you do all the time. So, okay, let's go to supplements because we got to talk about um, protective supplements and then wrap up. So if you are traveling and you're going to, you know, places that you've never been before, I think it's always good to equip yourself with some things as a protective mechanism or Mm -hmm. just to have on hand, like in a just in case situation. So here's where first and foremost, um, we've talked before about taking something like hydrochloric acid. If you're going out to eat, you're consuming more red meat or sushi or things like that to protect. So stomach acid detoxifies food, help break down food um, and emulsify your foods or assimilate proteins and things like that. So we like hydrozyme, we like betaine plus we like metagest there's you know several like of them utilize out there. utilize is another one from nutrition dynamic that's great it has a good combination of things so okay. gda max plus two is another one that's not so much for stomach acid but for blood sugar so if you're traveling and you're going to be eating more carb dense meals or you're going to be eating out more all of those are great things to have on hand to help your body break down the food yeah and then we would say vitamin c right? If you find that you're somebody who does get sick, like you can think like emergency and stuff like that. If you you don't want to use one of those, but just make sure there's some level of vitamin C. You can get it through food too, like citrus fruits and such. Um, binders. I always take binders with me when we travel. So I personally like biotoxin uh, binder from Cellcor. It also binds to glyphosates and other things in processed foods. You're going out to eat. There's rancid oils. You could just do like an activated charcoal as mm-hmm. well. You can get those from Amazon pretty cheap. Uh, Gluten Digest as well from Metagenics. Uh, This is a great supplement, especially for somebody who avoids gluten uh, because there can be cross-contamination. So you want to reduce digestive issues. You know you're going out to eat. Or I'm going to be totally transparent. 
I do enjoy gluten from time to time because I'm not, you know, going to just eat a salad all the time if there's no other options. I'm not advising this to general public because I think you need to get through your healing protocols first and keep gluten out. So don't listen to this podcast and go to your practitioner and be like, well, Liz said gluten digest. I could just take that and eat the gluten if I want. Um, no, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that there are going to be life events that you want to live life and that's okay because we're all human. So if you have a wedding or again, you have a fun vacation coming up and you just don't know what the options might be, maybe take the gluten digest with you and um, you know that can help reduce digestive issues. Garlic is also really powerful or silver psyllin. So we want to protect yourself from pathogens, bacteria, travels, diarrhea, parasites, all of those things on the road. There's a supplement called Allicin, which is garlic, straight garlic. You can do that or you can do one garlic clove a day, smash it, let it sit for 10 minutes to let the Allicin come out. So this 10 minute rule helps you get the medicinal uh, benefits of garlic. So we don't get the medicinal benefits from garlic from cooked garlic. So this is going to be raw garlic that you smash and chopping this or crushing this or whatever uh, releases an enzyme, alanase, that catalyzes the formation of allicin, which then breaks down to a form of healthful um, organosulfur compounds. So the researchers believe that crushing garlic before cooking will allow this alanase to work um, before cooking as inactivating it you know, or yeah. cooking inactivates that enzyme. So you could take that or you can do like the silver psyllin. Mm -hmm. There's a silver psyllin spray that you can get that you can do like if you're going to get on a plane or, you know, be in a really heavily populated area um, when traveling and then taking that with elderberry like one to two days prior to traveling. And then while you're traveling and maybe a day afterwards can help a lot with protecting you in that moment against whatever you're exposed yeah. to. Um, I would say so. knack too. NAC is so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. NAC is a really, really supportive thing for detox. Um, we recommend it a lot for people that like are dealing with long COVID and a lot of other uh, more long duration chronic symptoms to help the liver. Um, and then like Liz was saying with the garlic, garlic is just a, a common uh, antibacterial, natural antibacterial. That's anti-everything. Yeah. It's antiviral, antiparasitic. Anti it, it works against everything, <laughs> um, which is why it's so powerful. So that's another really easy, great one to do. I sometimes will just do raw garlic on like a salad um, or something like that just to, you know. You can swallow it as a pill if you're you like, can. dude, you girls are getting a little wild over here. I can't be eating the raw garlic. Uh -huh. um, you can, you could slice it or crush it. Like I just hit it with a knife, let it sit. And then I just take it. I like it. So I'll chew it, but, um, you could also Ugh. just swallow it, uh, like a pill. I know I'm weird. <gasps> Other foods that you can focus on here that are higher in digestive enzymes and also antiparasitic. I'm just going to run down this list and then we'll wrap it Great up for, for kids today. too. Awesome. Yeah. There's so many things in here you can give them. Pineapple, papaya, pomegranate, blackberries, pomegranate juice, cranberries, cranberry capsules you could do. This is great for kidneys uh, as well. Pumpkin seeds, citrus fruits, carrots, sweet potatoes, winter squash, onion, raw cabbage, kelp, coconut oil. Fantastic, especially if you're somebody who struggles with yeast, yeast infections. Mm -hmm. uh, MCT version of coconut oil is really great there. And turmeric. Uh, we think about flaxseed and then psyllium husk. So some additional fibers here in addition to you know other enzymes that we're going to be getting in these foods to support digestion and protect you while you are on the road. So, you know, I think with that, you guys, you just have to be smart uh, with your travels. Enjoy the fun foods. Definitely take the HCL if you're going to eat from a food truck. I've had some clients who've gotten uh, parasites from a food truck, pretty nasty ones, in fact. Uh, so I just think it's important to think about how can I be proactive? And I just want to touch on one thing here because we do have a lot of people who are like, how can I protect myself when I'm on the road or prevent constipation when I'm on the road? And the answer is not just what we've talked about today. The answer is being proactive because you're taking a reactive approach here. Mm -hmm. You're basically saying that I'm only concerned about my health when I'm on the road. If you're in a good routine, you're supporting your immune system, you're working on your gut health, you're doing all of the things to support your body functioning optimally. We have the natural defenses mm -hmm. internally. Yeah. God designed us to be able to live life, live in the elements, enjoy all of the fruits and vegetables and all of these things. But if you're only concerned about your health when you're on the road and you're only concerned about constipation when you're traveling, you're likely already constipated and backed up. Well, exactly. Liz health. and I both dealt with constipation while traveling before we worked on our mm -hmm. functional health. Like we are, again, we cannot be defensive. We need to be on the offensive when we are approaching these things because we can't just worry about it when it's already a problem. You have to get ahead of it so that it's not a problem. I no longer deal with constipation when I travel. I, I'm 
very, very normal because I get ahead of it because I have worked on it. A healthy gut does not deal with that as much. So yes, you can put some things in place that can help if you're in that situation, but work on thinking ahead and getting your health into a solid place so that you don't have to deal with those things anymore.